Alrighty, y'all, welcome back to another tutorial. And in this one, we are gonna be talking about Ethereum accounts. So question number one, what is an Ethereum account? An Ethereum account is an entity with an ether balance, as you can see right here in my beautiful diagram. And it also can send transactions. Now, on top of that, every account in the Ethereum network also has an address. And this is basically the account identifier. So you can kind of think of it similar to an email address where whenever you want to send someone ether, you are going to be sending it to their address. Now on the Ethereum network, there are actually two different types of accounts. And the first one is an externally owned account. And you may see this abbreviated as EOA. These are accounts that are controlled by individuals through the use of a private key. And we'll be getting into the details of private keys and public keys a little bit later on. But for right now, we just wanna focus on the two different types of accounts. So again, that's externally owned accounts, which are controlled by individuals. And the other one, as we can see over here, are contract accounts. Now these accounts are controlled by smart contracts and they don't require the use of any private key at all. And the reason for that is it's because Everything about this account is really just controlled by code. So no need for a private key or public key or any of that. Now, externally owned accounts and contract accounts actually have a lot in common. So let's go ahead and talk about the ways that they're similar, and then we'll talk about the ways that they're different. So if you can't tell by this beautiful diagram, first, you can see that they both have an address. So every single account on the Ethereum network does have an address, basically the identifier for that account. They also both contain an ether balance. And as you see right here in the little asset section, both types of accounts can send, receive, and hold not only digital assets, but as we can see from this balance, ether as well. Now, some other interesting things about both of these accounts is that both of these can send transactions to the Ethereum network and they can both interact with smart contracts. Hmm, pretty interesting. So now let's get into the differences. So externally owned accounts, one thing that makes them different from contract accounts is that EOAs or externally owned accounts are free to create. Anyone can go ahead and create really as many as you want for free at any time. And another thing is that they can initiate network transactions. All right, pretty interesting. So what about these contract accounts right here? So contract accounts, they actually require ether in order to create these. So why do these ones require ether and these ones don't? Well, contract accounts require ether to create because upon creation, you're actually using network storage. Now, another difference worth mentioning is that contract accounts, they can't initiate transactions on their own. They first need to be triggered by a user with an EOA, an externally owned account, and then that trigger can essentially cause the contract account to execute many different actions such as transferring tokens or even creating a new contract, which is an interesting use case, but we'll see why that's useful a little bit later. Now, some other quick points to mention is that transactions between two externally owned accounts, they can only ever be for the transfer of ether or tokens. In other words, those digital assets. You can't really do anything else whenever you're sending a transaction between two externally owned accounts. Now, whenever a transaction is sent to a smart contract, that's actually gonna trigger the smart contract to run. So these smart contracts are essentially gonna be stored on the network. And then whenever a user sends a transaction to that smart contract, it's gonna kick off execution of whatever program it is. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a closer look at this private key, public key, what's all this about? So whenever you have an externally owned account, that account is controlled by a key pair. Now a key pair consists of a private key and a public key. Now, whenever you download an Ethereum wallet and you create a new account, the app in the background is just gonna automatically create these key pairs for you. And most apps don't even show these to the users because, well, to be honest, there's really never a need for the user to interact with these directly. But as developers, it is useful for us to know what's going on behind the scenes. So that's why we're taking a video and learning a little bit more about them. But either way, uh, getting back to this, 
the private key right here, this gives you control over your entire account. So rule number one is never share your private key with anyone. Now, without getting too deep into the cryptography behind everything, let me just give you a real brief overview of how these transactions and private keys and public keys all work together. So whenever you wanna send ether to someone else, you're essentially gonna create something called a transaction. And that transaction is gonna say, we'll just say in layman's terms, hey, I wanna transfer ether to someone else. Now, whenever you do that, your app is gonna use your private key and it's gonna create something on that transaction called a digital signature. Now, the digital signature is used to prove ownership of your account. So again, you are gonna create a transaction pretty much to instruct the network what you wanna do, and your app is going to add a digital signature to it, which is essentially proving to the network that you do indeed own this account. Now, since other people do not have your private key, hopefully, unless you know uh, someone stole it, since other people don't have it, they are not able to create the signatures needed to authorize transactions from your account. Now, with that being said, if you ever lose your private key, there's actually no way to recover your account. So unlike you know a centralized account, maybe some social media, remember on the Ethereum network, there is no single corporation or government controlling this network. So there's not anyone you can phone up and be like, hey, I lost my account. Uh, can you uh, email me my private key or anything like that? Now, if anyone out there wants to learn more about digital signatures, I did create a tutorial about this. So if you just type in the New Boston Digital Signatures, I'm sure it's gonna pop up. But in this video, I dive into the technicals and explain how everything works in detail. For now, I did wanna leave that out of this tutorial series, since to be honest, cryptography isn't that important for Ethereum developers. And I say that because as developers, a lot of the complexity is abstracted away in our development tools and libraries. However, with all this said, it is helpful to have a basic understanding between private keys and public keys and addresses. So let's go ahead and tie everything together now that we understand the core components of this entire system. So we'll walk through it one step at a time. So you went ahead and you thought Ethereum was pretty cool. Maybe you saw a video series and decided to download an Ethereum wallet. Now, whenever you did, you downloaded it. In that wallet application, the very first thing it did whenever you wanted to create a brand new account is it generated a private key. Now, behind the scenes, a private key is just a really long random number. And this is generated sometimes from user input, but most of the time your computer just uses whatever random number generator to generate a secret private key. Now, in order to generate the public key, what the application is gonna do is use something called elliptic curve cryptography. And this is explained in my digital signature video, but real quick, uh, what it's gonna do is use something called a one-way uh, function to essentially get a value for the public key. And the cool thing about this relationship right here is that if you have a private key, using elliptic curve cryptography, you can always figure out the public key. Now, this is where things get interesting. If you have the public key, you cannot figure out the private key. So that's why the term one-way function comes in because you can essentially calculate something in one way, but not backwards the other way. Now, what is the relationship between this public key and the address? So whenever you have a public key, you can generate... <laughs> Hold on, my arrow is uh, freaking out now. There we go. So in order to generate the address from a public key, what you do is you essentially take the hash of this public key and it's kind of weird, but you take the last 20 bytes of that hash and then you add a zero X to the beginning of it. And this is going to give you your address. So I know that this is uh, kind of weird, but just to sum it up real quick, your computer or your wallet is gonna generate a random private key, basically like a random password, think of it like that. Now, as long as you have this private key, you can always calculate the public key from it. And with the public key, you can calculate the address. So this is pretty much the relationship. Again, this process is done through elliptic curve cryptography, and this process is done by taking a hash of a public key and taking the last 20 bytes and then adding zero X to the end. Again, 
I do want to mention that if all of this feels a little bit overwhelming or it doesn't really make sense, we really never need to get into the weeds of all this as developers. It's just that as developers, whenever I mention private key, public key, or address, I don't want to confuse anyone. And I do want to point out that there is a difference between each of these three values. And that's really all you need to know. So on that note, we are finally done discussing public keys, private keys, accounts addresses, different types of accounts. And in the next video, we are gonna be getting into transactions, which are, well, a whole lot more interesting. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you later.